morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your calls on the bright side at 844-236-6010. If you want to wean yourself or a loved one or friend or family member, workmate, loved one off their meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number today on the bright side. And if you want to purchase any of the Longevity products or our True Skin Health products, please head over to my websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, or for our True Skin Health products. You can go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Make sure you take a look at our retinol 5% gel. If you're dealing with aging skin or you don't want to be dealing with aging skin, prevention is absolutely the way to go. And you want to start using topical skin care to accelerate or enhance or amplify the production of wrinkle busting connective tissue. At uh, probably in your 30s. Believe it or not, the skin starts to break down and manifests the signs of aging for many folks in their late 20s, even in their early 20s. So somewhere around your uh, 25 to 30s when you really want to start focusing on anti-aging your skin if you want to prevent, and it's always best to prevent, the formation of wrinkles, fine lines, crow's feet, thinning skin. And of course, if you're interested in an anti-aging topical skincare program, nothing beats retinol, especially in high concentrations. And uh, not even vitamin C beats retinol, but vitamin C works hand in hand with retinol and you'll get both in our Truth Retinol 5% Gel. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so welcome back to The Bright Side. We're talking about the relationship between movement and the connective tissue. The connective tissue makes up a third, a third to a quarter of the body. The connective tissue conducts electrical energy. The connective tissue feeds and nourishes and detoxifies the rest of the body. That's one of the underappreciated roles of the connective tissue. The connective tissue is a detox system in addition to obviously connecting everything together. The connective tissue is composed of fibers that are dispersed in this complex of biological grout, if you will. The grout, the biological grout that holds the fiber in place is made up of sugars, complex sugars, substances like glucosamine and hyaluronic acid will support the production of these fibers. That's why everybody wants to be using hyaluronic acid or glucosamine either in a supplemental form or in terms of foods, uh, specifically uh, bone broth protein and bone broth are good sources of glucosamine. Mush, mush, uh, mushrooms will get you some glucosamine as well and of course organ meats too. Uh, protein is also important, organ meats, bone broth. Uh, specifically proteins that help you build collagen. One in particular, uh, one amino acid in particular is called glycine, and glycine does double duty as an immune booster as well as a connective tissue building substance, and you'll get glycine in bone broth protein. Glycine deficiency is actually somewhat common, unfortunately. There's also trapped water in the connective tissue, what, we, what we've been calling structured water or electrified water. This is water with a voltage. And the uh, primary role of this structured water that's trapped inside the connective tissue, or more specifically bound inside the connective tissue, is to support the electrical charges on the connective tissue. Connective tissue is an electrical network in the body. 
Given the, the energetics and the flow of this entire connective tissue system, it should come as no surprise that the connective tissue is healthiest, it's strongest, it's most vital, and it's most able to do its work of, of feeding and breathing and detoxifying the rest of the body, all the cells of the body, when, they, when it is dynamic, when it's in movement. The connective tissue needs to be in movement. This is why sitting is the new smoking. And this is why movement is so important when it comes to good health, when it comes to strength, when it comes to anti-aging as well as when it comes to just the plain old beauty of the body, when it comes to the physical appearance of the body, when it comes to the physical appearance of the skin. What we call aging, the visible signs of aging are a deterioration of the connective tissue or a degeneration of the connective tissue. So movement, which stimulates the growth of connective tissue, which, which uh, makes the connective tissue healthier, which enhances the, the ability of the connective tissue to repair itself. This is why movement is one of the best beauty tools you can use. Movement, pressure even, even pressure on the connective tissue, just pressing on it, will encourage electrification of this substance. So movement, pressure, generally what we call stress is the connective tissue's best friend. Yes, stress is the connective tissue's friend. That is stress within a context of rest. Stress, or what is technically called eustress, as in EU, the prefix for good, eustress, good stress, encourages the production of new, young, strong, healthy collagen and connective tissue. It encourages the breakdown and the elimination of old, weak collagen and connective tissue. The body has a cleanup system for getting rid of old collagen. If you're dealing with osteoporosis, you probably have an issue with your connective tissue. You probably have an issue making your connective tissue. One of the big problems with the drugs they give you for osteoporosis, substances like Fosamax or, or Boniva, Technically, these substances are called bisphosphonates. One of the, the problems with these bisphosphonates is the way they work is they suppress the degradation of old connective tissue, that is, old bone. By suppressing the production of old bone, you maintain your bone, but it's old bone. It's weak bone, and this is why people on Boniva and the uh, uh, Fosamax and the bisphosphonates are more prone to fractures. The body needs to clean up the old stuff and build the new stuff. There's no drugs that are going to build new tissue. There's no drugs that are going to make you healthy, make your connective tissue healthier. They can suppress the deterioration or the degradation or the removal of the old stuff, but it's not going to stimulate any production of the new stuff. Only nutrition does that. Only oxygen does that. Only detoxification does that, and only movement does that. So movement plays a very important role in the nourishment, the repair, the oxygenation of the cells that produce the connective tissue. In fact, all cells of the body are better nourished, better electrified, better oxygenated, better detox when we are dynamic, when we're movement, especially the detox. Movement of the connective tissue and of the muscle that's associated with the connective tissue is way more important for detox than any detox formula you could buy. I always get a kick out of detox formulas, and there's lots of them on the market, because most detox formulas are made with herbs. And guess what? Herbs have to be processed like toxins. So it just, it's, it's, it's just crazy to take an herbal detox formula when your body has to process that herbal detox formula as if it were a toxin. You just put more work on your detox system, on your liver, and on your detox enzymes when you use an herbal supplement, when you use an herbal detox. One of the best ways to energize and stimulate the muscles and the connective tissue is to do stretches. As the connective tissues pull on the muscles and as the muscle fibers loosen and start moving with each stretch, they also flush out toxins and waste byproducts. These toxins and waste byproducts accumulate in the body as the body is sedentary, especially at night when we're, uh, when we're inactive for six or eight or, or, or even more uh, hours. So carbon dioxide builds up at night, lactic acid builds up at night, and one of the reasons we feel like crap in the morning and we go, we go reaching for the coffee is because of this accumulation of toxicity, carbon dioxide and lactic acid that have built up through the night. That's why stretching first thing in the morning is so important. Alright, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number you're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. The 
back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, the longevity products, skin health questions. If you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, if you've, if you've used our Truth Skin Health products, love to hear what you think about that. Or if, you're, if you've uh, noticed uh, changes in your health from using the longevity products, we'd love to hear about that as well. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, and we'll get your calls here in our next segment. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air on the bright side, Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time and 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products right off the website. And, of course, you can sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business. You can sign up right off the website or call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. If, you, if you're business-minded, entrepreneurially minded, if you like starting businesses, if you like being in business, if you like the, the sales, the, the dynamic of sales, which I consider to be just, if you have a good product, I consider it to be a super valuable and super important way to make money. If you have something that's going to change lives, which is, of course, what longevity products do, they change lives at the most fundamental level, which is the level of health, the level of the body. Give the gift of good health this Christmas season. If you are in longevity, give some Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Give some Beyond Tangy Tangerine to somebody in a nursing home. Watch what happens. Remember, one of the great gifts of the human body is the more deficient we are, the more nutritionally deficient we are, the faster our body absorbs those nutrients, like a dry sponge sucks up more water than a wet sponge. And folks in nursing homes are so malnourished, so undernourished. Give the gift of Beyond Tangy Tangerine to someone in a nursing home. Watch what happens. Almost in front of your eyes, just like when you water a plant that hasn't been watered, almost in front of your eyes, you'll see the body, just like a plant, start to, start to sprout, just get bigger. It'll look bigger as people are nourished, as people start getting their electrical nutrients, as people are hydrated, you can actually visibly see changes, let alone the changes that will accrue over the course of time in the immune system and building and in the brain as well. You can find out about all the longevity products at brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com, also benfuchsarchives.com. Okay, so stretching, super duper important. Stretching helps the body, helps uh, detox, improves detox. Movement of the connective tissue of any kind is important for detox. Uh, stretches uh, where you pull the muscles and the muscle fibers start to loosen and the muscle fibers move, flushes out toxin and weight, toxins and waste products, especially, especially first thing in the morning when these toxins tend to accrue or tend to, uh, tend to be at their uh, highest concentration because we've been still throughout the night. So carbon dioxide and lactic acid can build up. Yesterday we talked about watching your pet, or especially your cat, wake up from a nap. You'll see that your cat, and your dog for that matter, will naturally stretch their body. They intuitively understand that stretching improves the muscles and improves the connective tissue's ability to circulate blood and circulate lymph and, and detox as well. And by the way, lactic acid and carbon dioxide can cause neuropathies and cause what's called joint pain, cramping, soreness, uh, improving the elimination of these substances. Lactic acid, carbon dioxide, and other toxins can help improve neuropathies, can help improve cramping, can help improve soreness. Many people notice that they have their neuropathies get worse in the middle of the night or when, uh, first thing in the morning. Stretching, of course, also prepares the muscles for activity. It doesn't have to be intense activity. Most people know that a good stretch before a workout is helpful, but you can just do a stretch first thing in the morning to protect you from the act, uh, to uh, support your activity throughout the day. It doesn't have to be a big workout. You've got two kinds of stretches. You've got static stretching and dynamic stretching. The kind of stretching most people know about is static stretching. That's where you hold positions for 30 seconds or 20 seconds. You just kind of hold, lift your arms up over your head and kind of pull each arm to the left or to the right and you hold it. Static means not moving. Dynamic stretching involves the movement of the muscles, doing things like leg lifts, butt kicks, hacky sack kicks where you where you raise your knees up to your chest those are dynamic stretches dynamic stretches are more appropriate if you're going to be doing weightlifting if you're going to be doing intense workouts or powerful workouts static stretching is more for your day-to-day -day kind of workout or for uh, aerobic kinds of workouts 
Static stretching or the classic kind of stretching. And these are typically done when you're standing still and you're kind of focusing on one muscle group at a time. You hold a position for 30 seconds or 60 seconds. The idea is to warm up and loosen the joints so that they can be used during movement types of activity, like aerobic exercising, or even if you're just taking a walk. Certainly, if you're if you're going for a jog or going for a run, you're going to want to do static stretching. Dynamic stretching prepares the body for more heavy kinds of workouts. Dynamic stretching utilizes momentum, so uh, the kind of stretching where you're just uh, crossing your leg uh, or moving your legs across your body or moving your arms across your body. These are called the dynamic stretches. The static stretches are yoga stretches. There's a reason people do yoga in the morning, folks. People have done yoga in the morning for thousands of years. The poses, the stretches, the positions, these are called asanas in yoga, A-S-A-N-A. -A -A. These, these various poses supercharge your connective tissue. They improve the flow of oxygen through the connective tissue. They improve the flow of nutrition, vitamins, and minerals through the connective tissue. They improve the flow of electrons, i.e. electricity, through the connective tissue. So doing asana poses, yoga poses, is far from a religious, a religious experience or a spiritual experience. Actually, it may be a religious. I've never done them, so I don't know. Maybe religious or spiritual experience. But really, what it does is it prepares the body physically. In my opinion, anyone dealing with a chronic, long-term degenerative disease would benefit from a yoga, a yoga practice. And that, by the way, includes cancer, which is the ultimate end result of cells that are not getting nutriated, oxygenated, or detoxed. Detoxify. The stretches, the asanas, the static stretching that's associated with yoga helps improve all of these functions. And even better, it prevents cancer because it improves all of these functions. Even chronic fatigue or morning fatigue can be alleviated by these supercharging effects of stretching and flexibility and movement. If you're tired first thing in the morning, try running in place for 60 seconds. Just running in place for 60 seconds can supercharge your connective tissue. If you're tired in the middle of the day, try running in place for 60 seconds. Just at your desk. Yeah, you may look a little silly if you're in the office, but still, you're going to feel a lot better. Just the pressure on the connective tissue as you go up and down will jack up the electrical energy that's flowing through it. If you're tired, exercise. I know that's counterintuitive. It doesn't make sense. Oh, I'm too tired to exercise. Actually... If you exercise for, and it doesn't take long, 60 seconds, 120 seconds. If you do an intense exercise for 120 seconds, when you're tired, you will actually supercharge your connective tissue and have more energy. Not only that, but you'll also be encouraging the production of new connective tissue. You'll be uh, encouraging the repair of your connective tissue. And that includes the connective tissue of the heart. Remember, we started this whole connective tissue discussion a couple weeks ago by talking about the heart, the heart being, uh, being dependent on connective tissue, heart cells being dependent on connective tissue, the organ itself hanging on connective tissue. The organ called the heart is actually protected by a bag of connective tissue, the pericardium. In my opinion, that makes stretching, movement, exercise, nutrition for the connective tissue way more important for cardiovascular health, for heart health, than any toxic cholesterol-lowering statin drug. Yes, stimulating the production of connective tissue is way more important for cardiovascular health than suppressing cholesterol. Of course, you don't need a doctor for any of these strategies we're talking about here, and you'll be a lot better off. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back with more good health information and you and your phone calls right after this. Looking. All right, we are back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. We've got lines open for you. If you have questions about the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you are in the longevity business and you have a problem patient, we can help you. Uh, we can help you understand a nutritional supplement program for problem patients. If you want to wean yourself off your meds, of course, eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We can help you do that as well. Okay, we'll get your calls here in just a sec. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about connective tissue and the heart, how you can support cardiovascular health by using connective tissue building strategies. I want to talk some more about coenzyme Q10. I'm not done talking about that one. That's a super important nutritional supplement that nobody gets enough of. Uh, as a supplement, it's not an essential supplement, of course, but in my opinion, as we get older, everybody needs a coenzyme Q10 supplement. We'll talk about that tomorrow. 
from the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center. Check this out. Study shows fasting kills cancer cells of common childhood leukemia. Study used mouse models that indicated the effects of fasting on blood cancers. And uh, this was published in the journal Nature Medicine. They identified a mechanism that was responsible for fasting, what they call fasting treatment. That means using fasting to treat uh, cancer. I love this idea because most of us, many of us anyway, are under the impression that when you have cancer, you gotta eat a lot of food. You gotta eat more calories because you don't wanna get skinny. Well, as it turns out, fasting can actually kill cancer cells. This is perfectly understandable when you understand how the body responds to calorie restriction. The body upregulates growth and building and repair and anti-aging and immunity under conditions of calorie restriction. It kind of tricks the body. Restricting the calories either through fasting or just eating less calories calories tricks the body into thinking that it better get going. It's like a kick in the pants. A good fast or calorie restriction even is like a kick in the pants for the body's metabolism. It says you better get moving body and you better get healthy body because we got to go find some food. That's basically what the message is. That's why fasting is so, so, so darn important. Not only as an uh, anti-cancer strategy according to this article and according to numerous other articles, but just as a general anti-aging feel-good strategy. Fasting and calorie restriction. Remember this whole discussion on connective tissue began with our, our talk about the ketogenic diet, the ketogenic Ketogenic diet is a high fat, low calorie diet. High fat, low calorie. Cannot emphasize that enough. High fat, low calorie, because a lot of folks are the, under the impression that it's a high fat diet. It's not a high fat diet. It's a high fat, low calorie diet, meaning lots of your calories should, a high percentage of your calories should be coming from fat, but overall your calories need to be kept low. So in many ways, the ketogenic diet is like a calorie restriction diet, even though it gets the reputation or even though we call Call it a high fat diet. Calorie restriction is a cheap and powerful anti-aging and healing strategy as is uh, periodic fasting or intermittent fasting as it's called. From the Journal of Neuroimmune Pharmacology, researchers find chemicals in marijuana that could help treat multiple sclerosis. I love this idea. More and more we're finding out that marijuana contains active medicinal compounds, particularly CBD. This article is about CBD actually. 2011 study. This is from, I got this uh, off, uh, I got this from the Journal of Neuroimmune Pharmacology last year. This is quoting a 2011 study that showed that CBD cannabidiol, which you could find by the way on our website brightsidehealth.com, Pure Hemp Technology CBD tincture. CBD, according to the study, treats MS-like symptoms in mice by preventing immune cells in their body from transforming and attacking the insulating covers of nerve cells in the spinal cord, that is uh, the my so-called myelin sheath. More information about CBD. CBD is an anti-inflammatory. CBD is awesome for anxiety issues. CBD is anti-pain. And now, according to this article, CBD uh, can help treat multiple sclerosis-like symptoms. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open. Let's go to Shauna in Idaho. Shauna, good morning. Good morning. You're How's my wisdom wizard. Oh, I appreciate that. Have I talked to you, Shauna? Are you the you did I meet you? last year about this time? I went on a fast and it helped me get my leg better. Oh nice. I, I didn't see you. I, I didn't see you when I was in Boise, did I last summer? Um, you saw me at convention. Oh, at the convention. Okay, good deal. Yeah, so, I showed you my leg. I said, Whoa, it looks a lot oh, better. Oh yes, 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 I remember. It looked a lot better. And how's it looking now? Good, except I still get itching a lot in the night. I'll wake up, just it, I won't have any rashes, and I'll just start itching. It Got will it. move from my chest to my back, down my waist, down my legs. Is it the kind of itching um, that's underneath that feels like it's underneath, yeah. like inside, and you can like you can scratch it, but you can't quite get at it, sort of thing? Yeah, but it feels yeah. good to scratch it. <laughs> it still feels good and to scratch been, it. Huh? Go ahead. I've been looking at some others, and someone said it might be hypothyroid. Well, it it's definitely hypothyroid. Out. No, it's definitely hypothyroid, but that's not the cause of it. Hypothyroid okay. precedes everything. It precedes all of it. Hypothyroid, the thyroid slows down under certain conditions. Number one, it will slow down when uh, uh, you're under chronic adrenal stress. 
Okay. Okay. So I am that on means that. If, yeah. yes, okay. <laughs> you know, most people, many people are, and this is, this accounts largely for the uh, largely for the uh, epidemic of hypothyroidism that we're confronting. Women will notice that when they go through menopause or, or perimenopausally or in menopause that they go hypothyroid because menopause puts a major burden on the adrenal glands. Also, okay. uh, the, the second reason why the adrenal or why we go into hypothyroidism is because of autoimmune disease, specifically something called Hashimoto's hypothyroid. Now, Hashimoto's Hashimoto's hypothyroid is associated with with the body actually killing or or, or somehow perceiving the thyroid as the enemy and, and attacking the thyroid cells. This is why, by the way, thyroid hormone is just a, such a silly way to treat hypothyroidism. The problem isn't the hormone. The problem is the organ, the gland. Either it's under autoimmune attack or it is a slowing down subsequent or following adrenal stress. So what I'd be doing, Sean, if I were you first and foremost, is working with the digestive system. System, just to make sure you don't have any autoimmune problems. And, and I know from seeing you that there's a g very good possibility that you do have some kind of autoimmune thing going on. Do, have you been diagnosed with any autoimmunity? I have not gone to a doctor. I just listened to you. Okay. Okay, good. So just work. You don't need to necessarily. There's nothing a doctor can really do for you. That's really important, Shauna. You're a smart gal because most people just go right to the doctor. And there's nothing a doctor can do. So first thing, yeah. Shauna, look for digestive health issues. And I... I, I I'm just going to say the same thing I say to everybody. Bone you got to what's that? Juice, no sugar, smoothies, you know the fibrous. drill. You know the drill. Anything Nine that has to life. And there you go. And fermented foods will restore gut bacteria, and gut bacteria are important for turning inactive thyroid hormone, T4 so-called, into active thyroid hormone, or T3. So even if you don't have an autoimmune disease, a healthy intestine and healthy, uh, a healthy gut, bacterial, uh, gut bacteria population is important for activating thyroid hormone. So that's the first step. Okay? The second thing you want to do is look for anything that is causing any kind of burden on the body, whether it's a psychological burden or emotional burden, mental burden, or physiologic burden. Now, the digestive, once you work on the digestive system, that's going to eliminate a major physiologic burden. You mentioned keeping yourself like low sugar, low carb. That can also reduce the burden of, of sugar toxicity and of also of excessive insulin. And so working on uh, calming down the adrenal glands is very important, but there's also some more direct ways that you can treat the adrenal glands. You notice we didn't say anything about the thyroid here. We talked digestion, yeah. we talked blood sugar, we talked adrenals. I didn't even mention the thyroid. And I'll tell you why here when we come back. So hang on, Shauna. We'll take a commercial okay. break and we'll Thank finish you. up. We got uh, uh, got lot, lots of lines open for you at 844-236-6010. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening. Are you? Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and we have lines open at 844, <clears throat> excuse me, 236-6010. Talking to Shauna. <clears throat> excuse me there, Shauna. Are you there? Okay, so Shauna, you notice we didn't talk say anything about the thyroid, right? We talked about the digestive right. system, uh, protecting the immune system, that is patching up the gut. I did, actually, I didn't talk about patching up the gut. Use uh, glucosamine fermented to patch up food. Yeah. fermented foods for, for, uh, for improving the population of gut bacteria. Gut bacteria activate thyroid hormone, patching up the gut with cartilage-containing products, glucosamine, your Fucoid Z, which will also get you a little iodine, by the way. And then uh, focus on the adrenal glands. Relax your body. Now, we, uh, the digestive strategies and the blood sugar strategies will have a beneficial effect on your adrenals. Psychological relaxation, visualization, mental relaxation, or those will also help. Using nutrients for the adrenal glands. Zinc is extremely important for the adrenal glands. Vitamin B5 can be helpful for the adrenal glands. Magnesium, copper, iodine are all important for the adrenal glands, as is the B-complex particularly B12. It would be, it'll be basically useless for you to focus on thyroid health if you're hypothyroid, okay? Because the adrenals and the digestive system and also to a certain extent the blood sugar system precede issues with your adrenal glands. This is why just using Synthroid or Levothroid or some kind of prescription of thyroid hormone doesn't help people who are hypothyroid except perhaps to give, for, give, uh, for giving them a quick buzz, like a caffeine-like buzz, but it doesn't help the thyroid. Focus on the digestive system, the blood sugar system, and the adrenal glands. Don't forget your slow, deep breathing techniques, Shauna. So, and I gotta, mine could yeah. probably be more psychologically, where I'm in I could be. different schools, 
and my Could kids, be. And, well, easily, kids and then doing easily. care and then wanting to do longevity. So easily, how do I Shana. Back off? Well, that, I want that's. I live to do all those <laughs> You know, one day we'll do a show on just the psychological aspects of health because, really, okay. it, the way I look at it, it's just as important, if not more important, than the physiologic strategies we talk about all the time. Sean, I got a bunch of calls Thank now. You. Everybody's calling me, so I gotta, I'm going to move Thank on. You. Good to talk to you. God bless you. Happy holidays. Okay. Love you. Okay, take care. Bye bye. Okay, Chris in Florida. Good morning. What's going on? Hey, uh, Ben. Uh, yes. Thanks for all you do. Yes. What's ben. going on? Thank you. I can't. Um, an honor to talk to you. Um, I've called maybe a couple times. Yeah, or a couple times uh, ago. I've listened for a couple years, but my uh, 11-year-old son, who I guess was diagnosed just recently, but but we think it may be something from birth called medullary sponge kidney. Now I, Me- I know you. Okay. Yeah, medullary sponge, sponge kidney. kidney. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, his his primary doctor, the uh, pediatrician, who I hate doctors. I hate everybody in the medical field except for you and maybe Wallach and Ricola. But well, it's not the people that, themselves, I, unless they're unless they're arrogant about it, which sometimes they are. It's not the people; it's the model. But go ahead. I, 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 I want to yeah. help you out here. It's their Basically. training. I wish I could bring the neck of their training. But anyways, uh, yes. Uh, according to his pediatrician, he said when well, we noticed, like a day after he was born, there was a little bit of dried uh, blood that was in he, where he would pee in his diaper, uh, and that our pediatrician actually remembered that, and he formulated mm. that it could be medullary sponge kidney. He took him to a specialist. I hate the word specialist, like this, <laughs> but we took him there, and uh, who was a really great older doctor, kind of a hippie, so you knew he wasn't sacked by the pharmaceuticals yet. Okay. Um, so okay. nonetheless, he said that he, you know, he would say that he had medullary sponge kidney. It's okay. We should cut down on vitamin C. I, I'm, uh, I'm losing you there. I'm losing you, Chris. Did you say cut down on vitamin uh, C? Yeah, the, the, uh, our research has dictated that, that vitamin C may not no. may be sort of uh, attributing to medullary sponge kidney. No, it's not going. That's not true. That's not true. Medullary yeah. sponge kidney is typically congenital. How old's the boy, by the way? Uh, 11. Okay, so does he have any history of stones or anything like that? Cloudy well, urine, yeah. painful uh, on urine? An, on, an, on an ultrasound, we, you know, a couple of times when he was younger, he peed uh, red. So we thought that was a big problem, but when he had gotten hit in the back, so maybe thought it was that. But long story short, he has eight stones from a little ultrasound yeah. that we found. But okay. we're not sugar soda people. Basically, he's got a weak kidney. Basically, he's got a weak kidney. Forget the term medullary sponge. That just means that there's little pockets and cysts that are forming there, and it looks like a okay. sponge. But you don't need to worry about that. He's got a he's got a weak kidney. Vitamin C is excreted through the kidneys, so that's what they're thinking. I imagine is that the vitamin C will put a stress on the kidneys as the body tries to eliminate it. That's not a reason to avoid vitamin C. It's an essential nutrient. You maybe want to avoid big doses of it right away. That might sure. be the case, but you absolutely don't want to avoid it. That's pretty silly for anybody to say in fact vitamin yeah, c is okay. almost like almost like a panacea for these kinds of things now the problem is that it was congenital and that means that it probably there's probably something that happened in the in the womb so at this point what you have to do is you have to be very kind and gentle to the body particularly sugar sugar presents yeah. a major burden to the kidneys for the doctor to say avoid vitamin c and not to mention sugar it seems kind of silly to me uh, does he have yeah. any issues w- with blood sugar and is he gaining weight or is he noticing no, any diabetes? No, skinny as can be. My wife and I have always been thin framed. Uh, we okay. have to call right. kind of a run. But. Okay. Okay. I wouldn't. I, what you got to be doing is taking care of his body, as just like you'd be doing with anybody else or any other child. Yeah. Except you got to do it with more vigilance, because he's already he's he's a little bit compromised at the level of the kidney, which yeah. is an incredibly important structure. Sugar restriction, uh, limiting processed foods and sweets and such is important for everybody, but it's extra important for your boy. And then in combination yeah. with that, I would be using nutrients that help the body process sugar: the sweeties, the B complex, B, the beyond. Yeah. The beyond tangy tangerine, exactly. Uh, B1, uh, B1 thiamine, B3 niacin, uh, magnesium. You really want a good nutritional supplement program. You want it to keep him hydrated. Pretty much you got to do everything everybody else has to do, or he does, uh, except you have to do it with way, way more vigilance because he's because of this, uh, the compromise at the level of the kidneys, which is super important, obviously, especially yeah. if he's already starting to form stones. If he's already starting to form stones, then that's telling me he's not taking care of business or, or somebody's not. Uh, so you really yeah, gotta... I, mean, I, 
I would, I would like to have my kids under 20 grams of sugar a day. And I, I, I'm almost, I listen to everything you say. And I, when people have an ailment, I almost feel as though I'm talking for the telling you what to say. Because you say the, a lot of the same stuff over and over again because it's accurate. But but I tell the same thing to my wife and kids. They want to throw me out of the window. My wife I know. Not, I know. It's terrible that. because you're the weird one. We're the, exactly. You and the I are the weird ones. Well, you know, <laughs> that's just how it is. And I don't know how to get around that problem, but, but that is an issue. He needs, more, he needs to be paying more attention to supplements, not less. But he really needs to be paying super close attention to how his body processes sugar. That's the most important thing. Yeah, uh, over the course absolutely. of time, you're going to probably have some, he's going to probably have some adrenal issues, too, because this can present a major burden on the body. So relaxation techniques can also help him. Uh, deep breathing, slow deep breathing can help. And then burning up sugar through vigorous exercise can also help him. You may want to get him into Tai Chi or soccer or something like that if he's not already doing that. Yeah, I, he's, I, uh, he's so sporty. He so is. Sporty. Okay, so. that's good. Well, Keep it going. Him. But but emphasize the sugar yeah. connection, uh, that, the relationship between sugar and the kidneys, and, and really focus on kidney health uh, in general. And don't worry about the medullary sponge part of it. That just means his kidneys are, the kidneys are, are compromised somewhat. And uh, the, yeah. t the name, the term is a bit, mis it's, a, it's kind of scary. It's not that scary. He's just got a kidney problem, and that's what you want to focus yeah. on. All right, I got to motivate. Please. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it. Thanks for the kind right, words, ben, Chris. I appreciate take, it, man. You're, you're take a care. Thanks, brother. Th thanks, buddy. Bye bye. Hey, Leo, good morning. Got about a minute, buddy. Leo in Oregon. Good morning, Ben. Ben, it's always a pleasure listening to your show. It's, Thank it's you. Like a, it's like continuing education and health, real education oh, and health. I appreciate uh, really that. Quick, I, Thank you, Leo. I, I, Really quickly, there's a, a whole host of pro, uh, uh, things that I would love to talk to you about, but I want to get right to the meat of the matter. I know someone that is having their colon removed. They're young, they're, they are young. Uh, they had some pre, uh, pre-cancer polyps detected there. Uh, they had some, uh, some colon cancer in their family history. They got scared. I didn't find out about it until recently, but uh, what, and, and there's no way, it's, it's happening as we speak, so there's no way to, to change their mind, so to speak. But what uh, suggestions would you have for lots, someone who's had? Lots, I mean, lots. Before surgery and after surgery, how to recover is what you're thinking? Yes, exactly. Okay, so first of all, pre-surgical patients should always be using digestive enzymes a couple of weeks before surgery, if they're not already using digestive enzymes, and I mean on an empty stomach, not to digest food, but to keep the blood flowing. This is so important when you're on a, a pre-surgery. Now, doctors like to clot the blood because they're afraid of overbleeding. The problem is that will slow down healing, and that will exacerbate inflammation. So using things like digestive enzymes pre-surgery, even vitamin E pre-surgery, although your doctor will probably tell you not to do that, that can be helpful. Uh, making sure you're loading up on protein, especially building protein, bone broth protein, cartilage-containing protein, and then also glucosamine. Anything to help you build connective tissue to uh, stimulate the repair or, or, or minimize trauma and stimulate healing and repair. I'm out of time, Leo. I'm sorry, buddy. Uh, thanks for your call, buddy. Maybe call back tomorrow because this is kind of an important subject, pre- and post-surgical nutritional strategies. I'm pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. Please check out my Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com and the Longevity products at brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. We'll talk to you all later. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Bye for now.